has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, hour three of Coast to Coast. Rick Carr will join us in a little bit. Plus, our boy Blue, Mike Blewett, later this hour on C to C as well. All right, we continue with baseball, Carver High. Uh, yes, we do, Scotty. Yesterday, the White Sox lost again. They had to play a one game makeup with the Royals yesterday afternoon. Six to four, they lose that, uh, which now puts them three games out. In the American League Central, two games over 500. Let's check in with Tony uh, after another very frustrating loss to the Royals. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a frustrating loss. We were down four nothing. We came back to tie it. It's the same club. You know, we lost six four. So you want to say we're lousy? Say we're lousy. We came back four nothing. Well, the frustrating part, you know, we had about 10, 11 hits. You know, we had some chances for one hit to break open the inning. You know, Andrews came through a couple of times. We had good hitters, and we just left a lot of guys on base. A very frustrating loss. I mean, you've been hearing that a lot, right? Just it's just like every night, it's the same thing. It's why do they never succeed? Uh, And it's just that type of season for Tony and the White Sox. It really is unbelievable with the roster they have, the pitching, the lineup, the hitting, uh, everything they have, and that they just don't win is amazing to me. They really had no good stretches. Uh, it certainly is. You're right. They just have not had anything get going, even for a week, two weeks, where they rip off like a 10 out of 12 or anything like that. They just cannot Nothing. make it happen uh, as they uh, will now start a series in Baltimore tonight. The Braves beat the Buccos 2-1 at PNC last night, Scotty. All of the offense for the Braves, the kid, Michael Harris, two-run homer on Bally Sports South. Driven toward the gap in left center. That's well struck. That ball is gone. Opposite field power. 2 nothing. I mean, they got this kid wrapped up, too, for the next several years for, I think, like the blue light special, that discount, that hometown stuff. They got him early. Uh, I think they've done a great job of manipulating their contracts with all these young players they have. Same thing with Austin Riley. I think he's worth another $100 million on top of that cake he got. Uh, the one pirate run last night, though, Scotty, we must tell you, a cruise missile yes. uh, from O'Neill Cruz for the Buccos last night. Uh, Phillies beat the Reds 4-1. Last week, we were on Castellanos to hit a homer against his former team. Did it again last night on NBC Sports Philadelphia. 2-0 was hit in the air. Center oh. field pretty well hit. Senzel going back. He's going to be an observer. Wow. It's gone. It's a long home run for Castellanos. Number 12 on the year. You did get a chance to see him run a little bit more, John. That's 436 feet, and the Phillies take a 1 0 lead. You know, Syndergaard looked really good last night, and they have held down yeah. the fort without a doubt without Bryce Harper in the lineup. Now, he's ready to start his minor league rehab, and he's on target for September 1, and that's right around the corner doing push ups. They have held down the fort and done very well. This is a playoff team, in my view. And when they get him back, they're going to be even better. And they've got the good pitching one through five. I mean, Gibson and Suarez have been tough for them as well. Rays continue to win down at the Trop, Scotty. They beat the Angels 2-1 last night. Arosa Reina has been hot. Did it again on Valley Sports Florida. That one is drilled the opposite way. Ward's going to go back, and that ball's going to go. Let's just save a lot of time here. Tampa passed Toronto last night. They're eight back, and Toronto's eight and a half back. And the Yankees, we welcome all of our radio affiliates, Sirius XM 159 is our channel on satellite radio. And, of course, Sports Map and Sports Byline, good to have you with us on C2C on a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and as you discussed with Craig Mish earlier, Angels owner Artie Moreno will explore selling the team. Uh, him and the family there has been the owner since 2003. He has spent a lot of money 
and not a lot of success. Yeah, I, I got to say one thing about that. Several brand changes, too. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I heard uh, Craig talking about, you know, the, the too many uh, hands in the cookie jar from the family, uh, that the father, the sons, uh, and I got to tell you, that is not out of the ordinary to me uh, in business. No. In, in professional sports, there are a lot of families that own teams and all of their children are heavily involved in the organizations. I mean, I go on and on. Uh, you know, you just talked about the size. The entire family went to Los Angeles to have the meetings with Durant. Daughters, I mean, sons, I mean, the whole deal. And like, I'm not surprised at all that Artie Moreno's sons have had their hands in the business of the Angels. Why wouldn't they? Uh, it's no different than uh, Al Davis, Mark Davis. It goes on and on. Uh, you know, Jones and his son uh, in Dallas. Yeah. It goes that way around the sports world. So I think that it has nothing to do with what's wrong with the Angels, that the, the Moreno family and the sons have been too... Uh, entrenched in the business operations of the ball club. Well, what the hell else are you going to do when you own a major league baseball team that you bought and now it's worth two, two and a half billion dollars. Of course, you're going to have uh, people you trust working for you and running it. That makes no sense to me at all. It, it doesn't. It's just the yep. way the world works. Well, well so they will uh, see what they can do for that. Uh, Artie Moreno getting out of the baseball business. I'll have tonight's games for you after Haro. Scotty, next time. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for Warriors. In game yeah, live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. Kenny Pickett being viewed as the guy in the room with the highest ceiling should not be much of a debate. They ran to go sign Mitchell Trubisky. They offered up an idea that Mason Rudolph was their favorite quarterback in the sport for so long, yet drafted Pickett. But it did not seem like they were going to give Kenny Pickett any legitimate chance to win this job. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Are you concerned at all for what this means for Tom at the age of 45, entering his 23rd year? Definitely not concerned. Uh, I think it's something to contemplate, but I, I think it's something where when you've been doing this so long, you know, I mean, you're a veteran now of television. If Ben Stevens takes a week off, Ben Stevens is going to show up and do his job. Now, magnify that times 20 plus, right? And that's Tom Brady. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Fest Rick Harlow with your Sports News Minute. Well, Ontario was bottled up as far as gambling was concerned for the last five years. Of course, the 2018 Supreme Court decision had no impact on Canadian provinces, but it did allow the NFL and other sports to morph in a very aggressive expansion mode as Ontario and other provinces sat, BetMGM and others moved forward. Finally, before the NFL season, BetMGM becomes the official partner of NFL betting in Canada. And so the whole idea of generating significant revenue across the border doesn't impact CFL dollars and the Ontario mobile betting there, but it does significantly affect how the NFL Canada is deployed. What does this do as far as other international NFL games long term, Germany, London, Mexico, and the like? Well, it certainly sets a precedent 
look out for some significant dollars to flow into this process like always. So, uh, Rick Haro is our sports business and legal insider on Sports Grid and on Coast to Coast. And, um, you know, he's a Harvard guy. He teaches at Harvard. Uh, and I was with my buddy the other day, and his son graduated from uh, Wharton at Penn. And uh, if, like, can we put Rick on the screen now so I can see when I said Wharton, his eye, eyes like bulged and his uh, eyelids moved and his eyebrows went up and down because he knows when it comes to big time educational prowess you got harvard and you got wharton school of business and i just want to know do you think anybody from wharton can dance with all your friends up there in boston at harvard no we don't let them like like the yale guys the yale guys are free to do whatever they want to to the wharton folks okay we wrap ourselves in this uh <laughs> just protective uh, aura foil and we go foil and we go run the world we, we don't care about wharton we don't give a damn about yale we want to run the world how's that all right uh mr uh haro uh let's start with leon edwards he shocked the world with that kick to the face of the guy that never wears a shirt in public well now he's yeah right now, now we're gonna see what happens to uh uh you know wearing nothing in public because that was a huge upset i think the last time we saw that was uh in a ring was Buster Douglas-esque in a earlier era. So listen, the, the whole boxing um, fighting world needs new personalities. This guy looks like a new personality. So we'll have to see what happens. I think Mafia and I were at the, uh, at least I was there. I know for a fact I was at Matt Serra's upset of George St. Pierre, which was the biggest upset in UFC history uh, in terms of odds. And I think this was the second highest ever and I was really excited about it. Uh, I don't know. There's something about Usman walking around all the time naked uh, on red carpets and stuff with no clothes on that just is unappealing to me. It's like, bro, grow up. Like, really? Like, can you put a shirt on? I don't like when NFL players and, and, and athletes walk around, like, in public at, at events uh, showing off their muscles and, and uh, abs. I think they look like idiots, to be honest with you. I, I said on Friday, I hope he gets knocked out. And I'm praying for it. I'm glad it happened. The WNBA, how is their uh, playoffs doing in terms of audience? Big game tonight at the Garden in New York, Rick, as the Liberty try to knock off the champs in the final game. Winner go home. Inescu at the Garden, can she pull off the upset? Yes, she can pull off the upset. And, and the bottom line also is we care about this more than we used to. The ratings are higher. The attendance is good. The promotion and the marketing coming off the pandemic is better than you expected. It's not baseball ratings. It's not tour championship ratings. It's not close to preseason ratings. But the bottom line of all of it is this is a time when we have an opportunity to really showcase the WNBA at some of these big time games. And it's a big night tonight, as we know. I got to tell you, I watch the games and I'm a girl dad and, and my daughter, as you know, plays basketball yeah. at a high level. And a really she good player. A high player. Yeah, really. she really likes watching them play, and it's pretty cool. And I couldn't believe they won that game one. I almost fell over, but boy, did they get their ass run out in game two uh, in Chicago. All right, what about those NFL preseason ratings? How are they doing? Uh, a million and a half to two, you know, one and a half to two uh, preseason is unbelievable, especially they take all of the NFL Network games. You know what that means? That means people will still watch, even though A, they know the score, and B, they're the, rerun the reruns. And I'll tell you, the, the whole uh, NFL Plus streaming service that's now taking over for Sunday tickets, Sunday tickets going to be uh, gone by the way to dinosaurs, and the convenience that you can basically stream is just incredible. Again, to put it in perspective, the Tour Championship playoff won last week, about a three. The uh, Field of Dreams, a little lower. This is not a Major League Baseball number, but it's pretty darn good and will be consistent. And I think most people are going to watch week three because what happens week three was going from a meaningless preseason game to one that is the only one that probably matters. So how much does that NFL Plus cost? 
Uh, well, so 39.95. Uh, it's about 4.95, I think, a month. I, I don't. I didn't see the the number because it's going up and down every week now, depending on the premium uh, deal. And bottom line is, this is one of those things that the NFL decided to do to take over streaming. When the NFL decides to take something over, you know they do it. And this is a good example. So uh, why is it that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo can't find a job? Well, you can find a job with his existing team. Just the team stinks and he doesn't have any support. And can you imagine the prospect at the end of this year, Man U may be relegated? Couldn't even use those words together. Now it's a very possible idea. Dortmund, all of the pretenders are rumored to get the trade. This would be trading uh, Babe Ruth, uh, Sandy Koufax, uh, Hank Aaron, uh, all at once. So we're waiting for all of European soccer to deal with what Ronaldo is going to do for the rest of the year. Dortmund said they don't want him. Uh, Lamar Jackson, will he get guaranteed all of the money uh, that Watson got that has upset every owner in the NFL that deal? Well, that's precisely why he probably won't get that because Bashadi may be too good a businessman for that. But it's uh, we now have a leak. We don't know who it is. I'll be in Baltimore on Saturday. I'll be able to see where the deal really is now. But the leak says basically that the Ravens are willing to pass Kyler Murray money and obviously offer Watson money. But the guarantee is the thing. And I'm not sure the next deal for a big time quarterback will be a guarantee anywhere close to Deshaun Watson's number. Big issue now, as we know, is because Lamar represents himself, he doesn't have a buffer. So even if the numbers look good, you get tired of your owner constantly telling you you don't deserve X and Y and Z. It's just a normal negotiating tactic, but it becomes really difficult if there's nobody to, to, to run the interference, nobody to be, to be the middleman. Well, he and his mother are doing it, and I just think it's, uh, to be honest <laughs> yeah, with you, ridiculous. What's yeah, more popular, uh, betting at a Kroger's uh, by the deli or going to FedEx Field and betting on the Commanders to lose another game? I, I, I don't know there's going to be a lot of people betting on the Commanders to lose another game. But Kroger's interesting. Uh, Ohio, uh, take a look at their licenses. When Governor DeWine signed the legislation in Ohio saying it's going to start in 2023, he said, oh, you're going to lose a, a season of NFL football. Now we've got 35 licenses. Bowling alleys, restaurants, bars, and even some Kroger's. So I'll have a couple of potatoes, and I'll take the uh, Commanders minus six. How about the staggering increases in streaming television? And we're on a ton of them. Roku, Sling, Fubo. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're on all of them. YouTube TV. Uh, how about that business booming? 34.6% versus 34.8%, I think, is the latest number. First time in history, July numbers, where the streaming numbers actually passed the cable numbers. Now, the cable people are saying, well, you know, that's because July is not a great month for, for cable because NFL, NBA, hockey, college football, it ain't there. Well, you know, maybe we'll see them regain, but it isn't like it used to be. And streaming is taking over everywhere, as we said, NFL Plus. Now the key is, how do you monetize women's water polo? Let's see if that happens. How about Cutter for the World Cup? Facial recognition, all fancy. Just like the casinos have. When you walk in there, they got you. Yeah. They know exactly who you are. Yeah, the difference is 15,000 cameras in Cutter. There are eight stadiums within 35 miles of each other. This is going to be a revolutionary World Cup. A, because it's in the winter, not in the summer. B, because everybody's talking about the forced labor and all of the problems in Qatar. C, because the stadiums are really close to each other. And D, because of facial recognition, everybody says, well, it's the deep state. It's a security problem. What it is, is it's probably going to be the safest World Cup ever because there's one central location that knows where everybody is, how many chins that person has, and what he had for breakfast. Justin Herbert, now a brand ambassador for golf simulators. Is that what he does in his free time? I know he's not making the well, playoffs. Yeah, yeah. well, a lot of people say that as well. But these golf simulators in stadiums are a big deal, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Rick, have fun in Maine. I know you're doing nothing good up there.
Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Fantasy Sports Today. The running back that appears to make the biggest jump maybe in the last two months, uh, maybe in all of fantasy, honestly, Davis, is Damian Pierce, who played for the University of Florida. And the beef that went on at Florida, Davis, is that people wanted to see him get the ball more. He really was never a primary running back at Florida. He's sort of a throwback guy in the sense that you give him the ball, he's never going to lose yards. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. How are you targeting, Tom? The start for Sonny Gray today against the Rangers. And that has me going to the over on five and a half strikeouts. It's only sitting at minus 108. For the season, Sonny Gray has a 24.3% strikeout rate, but in four of his last five starts, he has been over that rate on a game-by-game basis, really boosting up that strikeout rate, which is good to see. The Rangers are a favorable matchup. They have a 23.5% strikeout rate versus righties, which is the eighth worst in the league. Uh, he's coming off of a 10 strikeout performance in his most recent start. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I mean, honestly, uh, between Davis and, and Diggs, I mean, they are lethal. I mean, between Josh Allen having that choice, and he goes to Davis a lot, and he, you know, he, he's got to get Stephon his, his uh, you know, targets. But between the two of them, I mean, honestly, it's almost like good luck trying to stop that offense. They are very dangerous. The Sports Grid Network. MGM app, which is what you need in your life, you can bet $10 on any baseball game in the majors. Win $200 if either team hits a home run. Use the bonus code MLBHR2022. You heard me right. Bet 10 bucks on any game. 200 is yours if either team hits a home run. Use the bonus code MLBHR2022. Get the Bet MGM app. It is crucial towards your success. All right, Carver High, we're still rolling baseballs. Yes, we are. The Rangers beat the Twins 2-1 to one last night. The Twins did turn a triple play in the game, Scotty. Nice what? job by them. Byron Buxton left the game with a hip issue, was getting an MRI today. It didn't go well. The Twins have put him on the injured list today, Scotty. So right. Buxton to the injured list after leaving the game. Not a good scene for the Twins, who already, of course, have fallen out of first. Marlins beat the A's 3-0. Brewers beat the Dodgers 4-0 last night. Uh, got a homer from Keston Hara. Lauer pitched great. Uh, nice job by them. Dodgers completely shut down. They did also uh, guarantee Max Muncy 13.5 for next year and a $10 million team option for 2024. Tomorrow, I promise, we'll give you the standings uh, tomorrow. I will get those to you at some point this week. The good thing about those, Scotty, is they change every day, and they're always good every day uh, to you. Right. So we will go to the standings tomorrow. Let's get to tonight because we have a full slate. 
The Braves are in Pittsburgh again against the Buccos. We have Max Fried and Ice Cold JD Brubaker here tonight. The uh, Braves minus 275 road favorites. Total of eight in this one. Buccos are plus 225. Yeah, there's no way I'm going against Freed here. I don't care where the game is. They can play in my backyard. Give me the Braves. Uh, I think this is going to be an under, believe it or not, uh, because I don't think uh, Brubaker's been that bad. He strikes out a lot of guys. His ERA's around four. Freed's around two. Uh, I'm going to keep it under and hope it's just another good game. It was like 2-1 yesterday, right? Yep, White Sox into Camden Yards to take on the Orioles. Dylan Cease gets the ball. Voth goes for the O's. White Sox road favorites, minus 135. Orioles plus 115, seven and a half the total. I'm going to go over, and I think uh, that's because of Voth's end of it. He'll give up five runs a game, and then uh, Cease will give up two. That's why I think the number is where it is. I'm going to go Cease and the White Sox and the over. Reds in Philadelphia again tonight. They have Nick Lodolo going against Ranger Danger Suarez. The Phillies, Scotty, are minus 200, plus 170 for Cincinnati. Total of eight. Uh, again, over here, I, I think Lodolo is going to get lit up, and I think Suarez has done a great job for the Phillies. I'm going to bet on him. Yankees and the Mets. Subway Series round two in the Bronx. Yankees look at a split. The four games this year with the Mets, they have Frankie Montas on the hill against Taiwan Walker. Yankees minus 130, plus a buck 10 for the Mets. Eight and a half, the hefty total in the Bronx tonight. Yeah, I, I, again and over because I don't believe in Montas at all. He's been terrible for the Yankees, getting lit up. And Walker has struggled mightily in his last two or three starts. And I'm not buying his 3-3 ERA either. I'm going to take the Yankees tonight, and it's not going to be because of Montas. I think it's going to be a bullpen-type game for both teams and lots of runs. Angels and the Rays at the Trop again tonight. Suarez and Corey Kluber are the starters. Rays minus 175, total of flat seven. Otani is back in the lineup for the Angels tonight, Scotty, after missing yesterday. I'm on Kluber and the Rays here, and I think they uh, pour it on Suarez. Mm. Giants and the Tigers in Detroit. Carlos Rodon gets the ball. Hutchinson goes for Detroit. Minus one, uh, minus 225. Giants heavy road favorites here. Plus 180 for the Tigers. Seven and a half the total tonight in the Motor City. I'm going to go under here. I don't think the uh, Tigers will score runs on Rodon. I love him and the Giants here, and I'm going to keep it under. His ERA about 2-8. I think he's pitched great lately, and I think he burned us on the strikeout total last week, but I still like his stuff to beat this team. I think the Tigers are awful. Uh, up at Fenway tonight, Blue Jays and the Red Sox, Scotty. Ross Stripling goes for Toronto. Winkowski is back for the Red Sox after they sent him down. Minus 140 for Toronto, plus 115 for the Sox. The big nine and a half total. We talked about this earlier. Lots of runs tonight at Fenway. Yeah, I think Stripling can beat uh, Winkowski and the Red Sox. I, I just do not like this team. Uh, the way they've looked in anything. The best thing they've done is playing that Little League game so the kids could be happy. But none of the fans are happy. The media's not happy. Uh, fans, nobody. Uh, they've been terrible. They deserve to be where they are. I'm going to go Jays here in Boston. Game two at Wrigley tonight. Cubs and Cardinals. They're in the ninth at game one, Scotty. I saw the Cubs were leaning on a 2 nothing lead going to the top. We'll see if they can shut it down. Tonight, you get the law firm of Woodford and Sampson on the hill for both teams. Minus 130 for the Cardinals. Eight and a half the total in game two. Yeah, I'm just not betting on the Cubs ever. So I, I rode the Cardinals uh, last night. I rode them today in both ends of it. So I'm going to go Cardinals again tonight in a nightcap to save face against the lousy Cubs. Zach Davies for the Diamondbacks tonight in Kansas City coming off a pretty good performance. Uh, Heelsley is going for the Royals. Diamondbacks, Scotty, road favorites here. Minus 125, plus 105 for Kansas City. Big total of nine. Look, I think both these teams stink. 
but Kansas City has played better for me over the last like four or five weeks than I think anybody anticipated. They've won some ball games here and there. I understand how bad Heasley is, and he's going to give up runs. I, I think there's going to be a weird game tonight. I'm still going to take Kansas City at the K. The Twins are at Minute Maid against the Astros. Justin Verlander looking to bounce back after a couple of shaky starts. Sanchez goes for the Twins. Astros minus 300 here, Scotty. Plus 240 for Minnesota, 7.5 the total. Yeah, I got to go uh, with the Astros again. Uh, I'm going to take another shot with Justin Verlander. He struggled in his last few starts, but I'm not giving up on him. There's no way I'm taking uh, Sanchez with 80 RA over Verlander at Minute Maid in Houston. I'm all over the Astros. They're my number two play on PharrellOnTheBench.com tonight. It's gas can night in Denver. We get Dunning and Marquez for the Rangers and the Rockies. Right now, Colorado minus 120, plus 100 for the Rangers. Ten and a half, the total at Coors Field. Uh, I like the over, and I like the Rockies. And again, uh, this game should be canceled because they're both so uh, awful. I mean, honestly. They both are awful. There's no doubt about that. The Guardians out at San Diego to get a little bit of that soft serve ice cream at Petco, Scotty. In fact, Mike Clevenger faces his former team tonight uh, with the pods. Savali is going for Cleveland. Minus 145 for San Diego. Seven and a half is the total. I like the pod race, Clevenger, and the over. I think it'll be flying out tonight at Petco, and I think Clevenger will beat his old team. But I still think Cleveland's going to score runs against him. Uh, and I'll give you this note for the Padres also. I did just see, I guess Tatis just spoke, Scotty, to the media uh, after talking to the team. Don't He's have time for that right now. But tomorrow on Coast to Coast, uh, I will liar. give you all the Tatis stuff. From that, Brian, we know he's a liar, no doubt there. The Marlins and the A's, again, in Oakland tonight. Pablo Lopez goes for the fish. Lou goes for uh, the A's at the ashtray. Oakland plus 120, Marlins minus 145, total of flat seven. As you know, Carver High, I am a professional Lug uh, thrower in the vehicle yes, I know. Uh, at high speeds. I know. So I'm going to go A's yes. tonight, and I hit the Marlins last night for you, and both of these guys stink, so I'm guessing under – because neither one of them can score runs. Dodgers and the Brewers again tonight. Milwaukee beat them last night in the first game of the series tonight. Great pitching matchup. Corbin Burns and Tony Gonsolin in this one. The Dodgers minus 145 plus a buck 20 for Milwaukee. Total an even seven. I'm under. I'm on Gonsolin. You got to be kidding me. He's 15 and one. He's having the season of a lifetime. I'm all over the Dodgers. Uh, and finally... In Seattle, the Nationals are in town to take on the Mariners. Fetty goes for them. Robbie Ray, who we mentioned earlier with the strikeout prop for the Mariners. Uh, this one, Scotty, minus 275 now for Seattle, plus 220 for the Nats, 7.5 the total. I like the over, but I'm all over Robbie Ray. He's my number one play tonight on ForellAndEvents.com. I love the way he pitches. I think he's going to eat the Nationals alive, and I think they're going to – uh, tee off on your boy, Fetty Fredo. Yeah, uh, so there you go, Scotty. The night in Major League Baseball uh, for you. Let's cash lots of tickets, including the lion's share. Uh, I'll play the Tatis for you tomorrow. I've struggled. I've made mistakes, but I'm going to learn from it. Says he understands the criticism from his teammates. Uh, said it, no one was harsher on things to himself in the mirror. Uh, I'll give you all this Joker's comments tomorrow on Coast to Coast, too. He's going to have shoulder surgery, which he probably should have had a year and a half ago. Uh, so there you go. All the Tatis stuff from today. I think with all of his uh, ailments and, and shoulders and broken wrists and everything else, he started doing uh, the juice to recover. It's that simple. Everybody knows it speeds up healing, whether it's HGH or uh, the steroids that he used. Plus the ball, it doesn't matter. Plus that he's a liar. Sports Grid.
your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Taking to the top four seeds here in the Big Ten, they're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. I don't like this pit team at all. It's again, it's a seven and a half with a lot of juice right now in the FanDuel Sportsbook towards the under. Flip to the eight. Maybe they're eight and a half. And let's talk a little turkey here with Pitt. The Pitt versus Miami for the Coastal is I do think Pitt found themselves the easier schedule. And perhaps the big difference is one of them goes to Clemson. The other one doesn't play him at all. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Nico Collins, who got some nice playing time toward the end of the year, but really not a lot of interest. His ADP is 217. I think Nico Collins is sort of interesting in the same way that like Devin Funchess was interesting, right? Because he's this super athletic guy. He's huge, 6'4", 215. I mean, he got on the field as a rookie. Not, not that many guys who are drafted where Nico Collins is drafted. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Do you believe he has the stones to fire both of them? His dad would have. I don't. Uh, I think Boone. I think Boone is safe, no matter what happens. You know, maybe if they don't win the East, but that's almost impossible. So I think he's safe. Uh, Cashman's contract, I believe, is uh, up uh, after this year. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I would think he'd be in more, uh, a lot more trouble than, than Boone would. The Sports Grid Network. Well, uh, obviously, Tati said, quote, I have failed, end quote. You got that right, kid. Secondly, uh, Walker Bueller is now going to have Tommy John, and he will miss all of next year as well, it looks like, uh, unless a miracle, and he was able to come back in you know, late August. He's done this year, so it's about a year. Uh, we'll see. Uh, that report is out now. Uh, Mike Blewett, of course, uh, Pro Football Today, Sundays on Sports Grid TV, and a regular contributor with NFL Skinny on Coast to Coast. Good to see you, Mike. I want to start off Good to see you. Uh, today, frankly, as you know, like I like to with the Steelers quarterback situation. Uh, all three have played very well for Mike Tomlin. You can't deny it. Even Rudolph has thrown dimes, game yep. winners, and there's talk of him being dealt. And I have never heard that out of the mouth of anyone from the Steelers. Uh, but I want to know if you think they're actually going to move him. And what are your thoughts on the competition that, frankly, I think has been centered around Pickett and Trubisky? Sure. So I would say you're correct. All three quarterbacks have played really well. They're, we've got two veterans on the team. And obviously, Pickett has gone 19 of 22. He's led a two-minute drive for a touchdown. He's led another game-winning drive for a touchdown at the end of a game and has looked very cool, calm and collected, even against some of the better defenders in the games that he's playing. I think Trubisky has gotten the rawest deal of the three Scotty during the games because he's playing against it, playing with a sieve of an offensive line, still the Steelers 
most fatal flaws that the offensive line unable to protect him. And even in a play where he nearly threw an interception, uh, he scrambled around and hit a receiver in the hands and people are blaming Trubisky for it. I don't quite understand that. I think the reason for the rumors surrounding Rudolph are that he really does not have a role on the team. They've made a decision that Trubisky is the superior choice over Rudolph. So he's either going to be the starter or pick is going to beat out all of them. And he's going to be the starter. There's no conceivable reason even if he was a slightly better option for the Steelers, that they would keep him around to start him. Otherwise, what's the reason for Trubisky? He'd just be a backup or they would have released him or never engaged in talks with him. They've made a decision organizationally that Mason Rudolph is not really a part of the future of the team. So it's Trubisky or Pickett. And I think that's why these rumors heat up. It's not really that hard to figure that out. It would increase the depth of the room keeping him there. But I don't really know what they'll get for him either. What are they going to get a seventh round conditional pick for Mason Rudolph at this point? Yeah. Well, what do you think happens with Brissett running the Browns until Watson gets back? What are your projections for him? Because I am not a buyer in Jacoby Brissett as a starter. It does surprise me that the plan would be to go with him until week 13 when Deshaun Watson returns. Obviously, there's been rumors of Jimmy Garoppolo and other rumors starting to creep up as to whether or not somebody else would take his place. Uh, I still think that you have to hold your breath if you're a Browns fan with Brissett running the team for those first 11 games, but I really wouldn't count out them making an acquisition at some point here before the year starts. Jimmy Garoppolo is still there. He is still an option for a couple of teams. Cleveland and Seattle. And I I think you're just waiting around to see when the other shoe drops. It's all a matter of what they want to compensate the Niners for, right? That's why the the Baker to Carolina situation took so long. They were just trying to figure out what the compensation was. I think this is what it is for Jimmy Garoppolo. And the compensation might be, we're not giving you anything because we know you have to release him. Blue, are you surprised how little respect the Bengals get whatsoever? I mean, they went to the Super Bowl, yeah. and no one talks about them at all, and everyone's handing the Ravens the North. I am aligned with you. Yes, I am surprised. Uh, I've talked with George Kurtz and others on the show, and obviously you see the reaction from people. The general consensus is that the Bengals are going to see some form of regression. And I understand that because they won a lot of close games – The field goal kicker got unusually hot and he hit everything down the stretch and through the postseason. I understand that. But it does not address the fact that their one flaw on the team was their offensive line. They went out and they signed several players, Pro Bowl level players, in order to shore up that line. Joe Burrow will be even healthier after this appendectomy surgery. Obviously, that's a bump in the road to his conditioning. But Jamar Chase will be a year better. T. Higgins, uh, Joe Burrow, and Obviously, Joe Mixon, along with a fortified offensive line, by the end of the year, they were doing what they should have done at the beginning of the year, which was throw the ball more often. And I think they will continue to do that. I think this offense actually gets even better. The fair question is whether or not those defensive players that they acquired last year and played well, and Jesse Bates holding out during this camp, can they bring it like they did towards the end of the year last year up until maybe the second half of the Super Bowl? I think the defense is more of a question mark to me than the offense. And the offense could be a top five in the league. So, Blue, let's talk about the Patriots without Josh McDaniels and what you think is going to happen to Mac Jones without his coach that everybody thinks so highly of now that he's in Vegas. And they're working out with the uh, Patriots now this week, getting ready for their final preseason game with them in Sin City later this week. Correct. I, I, I think Mac is the type of player that obviously the Patriots love because of his dedication and how hard he works it to try to improve. But I do think that this is an issue. Belichick has to come out again today on WEI locally and say, everything's the buck stops with me. I'll take care of the offense. I'll be responsible for it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that he's play calling everything, but it's safe to say that people haven't been in love with what's been happening in camp. And clearly, Many people out there are hesitant to believe what happens in camp, but of all of the teams in this league, the one camp that we're think the couple of camps where things haven't been going particularly well are New England and the New York Giants. Uh, Giants, tons of injuries, still struggling on offense, and New England still seemingly lacking an identity. I think the spending spree that they had last year in free agency helped them for last year, and I have concerns 
as to the long-term ramifications of all those dollars spent. They lost an entire 2018 draft class. None of those players are on the team, and they signed a bunch of players last year, only one of whom really contributed in any significant way, and that was Hunter Henry. Do you believe the hype around uh, the Broncos with Russell Wilson and the Justin Herbert hype that we hear every year now that he's the greatest quarterback in the league and that his time is coming, he's going to win a Super Bowl, all this other rhetoric. Meanwhile, the Raiders went to the playoffs and Mahomes goes to the playoffs. Are Kansas City and the Raiders still the two best teams in that division or are you buying Denver and the Chargers? I would not say they're the two best teams in the division. It's a fascinating division in this respect. I actually think people are overlooking the Raiders. They were a playoff team last year. They signed 25 free agents, Scott, two of whom were and two of whom were involved in transactions. Devontae Adams coming over, obviously, and Chandler Jones coming over. Right. A sneaky bet for the AFC West is Max Crosby, 30 to 1 to win Defensive Player of the Year. I think Jones wow. can take some heat from him. And Max Crosby at 31 is an interesting long shot for Defensive Player of the Year. I don't think he's going to win it, but I think there's a shot for him to pick up 20 sacks and continue to build on his success so far. But uh, I think you raise a fair point about the Chargers and the Broncos. All of the speculation is being done on the paper. Neither team has done it for the last several years, particularly the Chargers blowing a lot of games late. Of all the things that you said, though, I do buy the Justin Herbert hype. I think he's excellent, and I think this offense could really get going. They just have to be better in the fourth quarter of games. The coach has to be better in the fourth quarter of games. I'm stunned that he's the favorite for coach of the year because he should be delivering a playoff team. They're excellent on a paper. Key point on the Chargers, J.C. Jackson, uh, their key free agency signing out two to four weeks after ankle surgery. So he may not start the season with the team uh, active. Uh, I think the Broncos, I have actually a little bit more doubt because there's an assumption that with Russell Wilson coming over, and it's a massive addition, excellent offensive players, a couple of key defensive players that are all pro level. Nathaniel Hackett's going to step in and immediately engineer a highly successful offense. I, I need to see it a little bit first. So I'm a little bit more cautious on the Broncos hype, although I will say on paper, a really good team, but you can't just put all four teams in the division in the playoffs. The Raiders value is the best. I think the Broncos value is the one that's caught a little too much steam for me. And I, I'm not, I'm not on the hype train as much as everybody else. Although I think they obviously made excellent additions. So, Blue, uh, the Rams, do you think they'll get OBJ to sign again? Or do you think he's going to Buffalo? And do you believe that Stafford's elbow will rear its ugly head at some point late in the season after, let's say, week 12 on? Will he start having problems with that arm that he already has problems with now? And then they yeah. push it under the rug like it's not a problem. I don't believe that for a minute. Yeah, he had problems with it last year, too. I feel like Matt Stafford's been hurt on some level for his entire 13-year career. It's always found a way to gut it out. So in that respect, I just have to trust that Matt Stafford's going to be out there, and I think they will be a, a successful team again. I wouldn't pick them to win the Super Bowl, uh, but I think they can win that division uh, this year in 2022. As far as OBJ, I think he's making two good choices. He's probably finding a situation where he's – He's as healthy as he's going to possibly be this year before he makes a decision. He may not even make it before the season. He had an ACL surgery that went sideways and obviously got injured in the Super Bowl. I think if I had to lean one way, OBJ feels more like an L.A. guy than a Buffalo guy to me, but maybe his friendship with Von Miller is stronger than I suspect, and he'll end up in Buffalo. Maybe he's going, maybe he's going to see how week one goes when they play each other. Maybe he waits to see how well – the first month and a half goes for Buffalo because I will say one thing about the Bills, as good as they are, you can wait and their odds will probably get a little bit longer. Their first seven games are very tough, and I don't suspect that they're going to go 6-1 and one or 7-0. and oh. So uh, when you look at Aaron Rodgers without Adams, there's got to be some kind of bloodshed from losing him. I just don't believe it's just going to be gravy for them. Yes. Historically, they have done a very good job at picking up from other guys. Obviously, Jordy Nelson came out of a situation where Greg Jennings had left and other guys have stepped up. We saw James Jones have success. And way back in the day, Scotty, when Sterling Sharp went down, Robert Brooks stepped up. They've always found right. a way through regimes to have other guys step up at the receiver position. But 
this cannot be exaggerated. He is arguably the best receiver in the entire league, and now your number one receiver is Alan Lazard, a guy that you couldn't even trust during playoff games to throw to him in on key third downs and in key situations. And getting Robert Tunyon back and Sammy Watkins and Romeo Dubes is not exactly the type of depth chart that gets me excited. Will they really lean a lot more towards the run when Aaron Rodgers is a two-time defending NFL MVP? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'd place some small wagers on Lazard to go over because I do think he has the requisite, requisite size and ability to be successful. But the biggest problem that Aaron Rodgers has had in the playoffs is that he doesn't trust anybody outside of Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones. Wow. So real quick, respectfully, I got 30 seconds. Uh, you buying Dallas Eagles still like it was or Eagles Dallas? I got Eagles to win that division. I think the Chicago Bears and the Dallas Cowboys did the least of any of the two teams in the league to improve their teams from the 2021 season. Wow, there he is, Mike Blewett. Can't wait to work with you on Sundays. I know you're going to lead in to in-game live. I'll see you, Blue. Great to have you on Coast to Coast. Thanks, buddy. Great stuff today. Thanks, bud. Talk to you soon. All right, there he is, Blue. You can catch him on Pro Football Today on Sports Grid Sunday mornings. I'll be doing 1 o'clock kickoff of the early games every Sunday. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen. 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. Why are you buying in on Dylan's stock for 2022? Aaron Jones has been remarkably consistent for the Packers, and I kind of see him playing almost a Alvin Kamara role in the slot, setting about wide. And I think they're going to they're try and save him from taking this, you know, ground and pound, and they're going to leave that role to AJ Dillon to have this kind of more of a balanced approach because they need a little more consistency in their passing game. I think it helps that the Packers' offensive line is right now ranked fifth. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Football is always so much fun because you see new players literally every single year and the anticipation is stupendous once it gets underway. And we're really close to that. A 1230 game overseas this weekend between Northwestern and Nebraska. And yeah, you're going to settle into Connecticut playing Utah State with a 27 and a half point line. Everybody gets in the way. Big 10, Pac-12. We cannot wait for this. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. The running back that appears to make the biggest jump maybe in the last two months, uh, maybe in all of fantasy, honestly, Davis, is Damian Pierce, who played for the University of Florida. And the beef that went on at Florida, Davis, is that people wanted to see him get the ball more. He really was never a primary running back at Florida. He's sort of a throwback guy in the sense that you give him the ball, he's never going to lose yards. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. This is yet, I'm told, the fourth, at least the fourth different offense that Mayfield has to learn as a professional in his five years. And from the very start, Pharrell, they kind of knew it. I'm told after two weeks, he was so dominant over Darnold. It wasn't bad, but the fact of the matter is his timing was good. I'm told a couple of the throws are a little bit high. They feel that the timing will be better as these guys work together. The Sports Grid Network. All 
All right, fast forward for all in your face on the Pharrell finish. Kobe Bryant would have been 44 today. Happy birthday, Mamba. Miss you. Ball suspend linebacker William Mohan after his arrest. I don't know what he did. It just isn't good. Couple who allegedly committed a lewd act in the top deck of the Astra at the A's game, facing six months in jail as police launch an investigation. The lewd act was they were having sex. That is awesome. Go to an A's game and look up in the upper deck and see some guy working his angle. Uh, unbelievable. Florida man tries hiding a half pound of meth under a cop car. You got to give him points for trying at least. I mean, if you're going to go down, you got to go down swinging, right? Italian man poses for a photo. Then he fell 650 feet to his death off the Alps where he was taking the picture. Watch out. I bet a girlfriend shoved him. It's just, you know, my theory, Carver High. I don't know. Dennis Rodman thinks he can facilitate the release of Brittany Griner by traveling to Russia. Says he's good friends with Putin. Good luck with that, dude. Dead body found on a hot spot beach. Turns out to be a sex doll. I'll never forget that trip to <laughs> Palm Springs Mafia when I got to my room and I had two sex dolls in my suite. They were kind of fun, though. Tyler Hero's girlfriend says, buckle up if you want to. Date an NBA player. That just sounds raunchy. Penn Entertainment now owns 100% of Barstool Sports. DUI suspect hit Blake Snell's car last week before his start. Some drunk crashed into his car. Gary Busey faces sex charges in New Jersey. Gary Busey is flat out creepy now. Have you seen him? I mean, my boy is creepy. Tom Weisskopf passed away at 79. Legend. California dog blinded after ingesting oxycodone during a walk. Mafia, check those pills I found on the morning walk with Boston, if you could. Girlfriend of deceased Oregon tight end Spencer Webb announces she is pregnant with his child. Good for her. Strap hanger stabbed by a panhandler has now said that the New York subway is a disaster. Gee, you think? I wouldn't ride that train if you paid me. Then we average about a murder a day. GTD is next. See you tomorrow.